Not gonna lie, this game kind of made me angry. Just, just a little bit. Hello, everybody. Catchy thirteen eighty three with Catchy Gaming, and so I'm gonna give my first impressions of Black Myth Wukong. Black Myth Wukong is about the Monkey King Sun Wukong from the Chinese mythology, and I really can't really say all that much more about him because that's about all I know. I mean, yes, I know about his whole entire magic bow staff that can extend and stuff like that and some of his abilities but i'm not like too deeply familiar with the lore i'll admit i do like to watch chinese films that involve sun wukong and let's not forget jet Li portrayed him uh and i think it was the forbidden kingdom with jackie chan back in 2008 and I used to watch an anime, like, in the early 90s. Yes, I'm that old. They used to show anime, like, at 6 o'clock in the morning. And one of them was Monkey Magic. And then they'd also show Dragon Ball Z. So I, I was ahead of the curve in that regards. So when this was announced, I was highly anticipating it to play Sun Wukong. Or is it Soon? Sorry, I, I said Sun they, they pronounce his name Soon in the game, so we're going to use Soon. Everyone else keeps calling him Sun. We're going to use Soon. And I guess for those who don't know, Goku, when it was just Dragon Ball, was based off of Sun Wukong as well. So enough of that. Let's talk about the game itself. So one thing for sure, it is a gorgeous game. That's for sure. Even on some of the lowest settings, it's gorgeous. A lot of detail, especially in the forest area. Same for the enemies. They are distinctly dressed. I mean, granted, they reuse a lot of sprites, but that's fine. Now, I will admit I had some technical issues with this game. It wasn't during the gameplay, oddly enough. It was with their opening cinematic, which drove me nuts until I found a solution, which was to change the bitrate on the headphones I was using, which, oddly enough, cleared up the stuttering of the animation as well as the sound issues I was having. So I went and watched that over after I fixed it. And it also bumped up all my quality of my graphics to really high versus just high. Along with it being around 60 to 70 frames per second. I dropped it down to high so I could push it at more frames though because it's kind of needed for this game. Now it also has a really nice sound design as well it has a lot of ambient noise when you're out in the woods and in the desert and it has some of that traditional chinese instrumental music going on and i just love that it sounds so good especially when you get to the desert when you see the headless man running around playing a three string sort of guitar like instrument yeah I, that's just a minor spoiler it's not really ruining anything so in terms of combat, even at the beginning of the game where you were sort of expecting it to ramp up, which it does, like the basic little enemies that you fight along the way are extremely easy. And some of the bosses are also somewhat on the easy side. Then they can range to somewhat on the hard side. Enough to make me really mad. So... Combat is actually rather basic. I thought you could chain together combos like between the light and heavy attacks. Turns out not so much. What you do is you use a bunch of light attacks, you build up some focus, and then you use a heavy attack. And depending on how far you are in the game, that heavy attack will have varying amounts of damage you can do depending on how much focus you've built up. So it's not really all that complicated in terms of hitting just the X button to do light attacks. Now you do get abilities like you can freeze enemies in place. There is a move to teleport behind them and you can also transform into other Yagwai. Not the Yagwai from Fallout, but that's actually the Chinese term for monsters. Which explains where Fallout kind of got it to begin with. Now, some of these monsters will be tougher than others, and you can absorb their spirits, and you can take on some of their aspects and use them in combat. 
which does add a little bit of layer to the complexity of it, along with the other spells that you will unlock along the way. Now there are different stances you can do that can slightly change up what heavy attacks you do. Like one, you just bash them with the pole arm or bow staff, whatever you want to call it. Or you can use it to extend, and there's another stance that sticks it up in the air, and you can do attacks that way as well. Now, I do have my issues with some of the bosses that I fought. Like I said, some of them are kind of on the easy side, like unexpectedly easy. Some are really hard, but that's due to what I would consider some kind of bad game design choices. Sometimes they just sort of don't even bother telegraphing their attacks. And some attacks can't be distinguished from just basic movement, so you're not sure if you should be dodging at all. And then there's some of the attacks themselves. I mean, having very wide sweeping attacks is nothing new to gaming at this point in time. I do find it slightly annoying. But the difference between this game and some other games is that they're trying to go for something flashy as a result making it hard to actually dodge sometimes because they're moving so fast and sometimes the camera doesn't exactly help you out kind of obscuring where you are in relative to where the enemy is allowing them to smack you let's take this fight with this big huge hulking tiger here as you can see there the camera shifts up taking and away from where Wukong is and you can't see where he's gonna land in relative position to where you are because all you can see is his head making it hard to dodge now this one isn't too bad it after you know getting beat up a few times you kind of get used to it and getting the dodge down by just sheer volume of getting thrashed then there's this boss who has that big huge hulking stone thing they throw at you it fills up your whole entire screen but you don't even see where Wukong is and the only way to not take damage is dodge but you can't see where your position is to dodge and one time I was just frustrated with this fight and I was I was getting frustrated and making a lot of mistakes and he sent that big huge stone thing down at me and it didn't even touch Wukong and it counted as a hit because the hitboxes on Wukong are just so freaking big which is another thing I absolutely positively hate are just the world's biggest hitboxes I mean yes you can bypass it for the most part by dodging but again if you can't see where in terms of relative position you are to the object coming at you it's hard to dodge and I'll admit at times the depth perception isn't that great and it also makes it a little bit on the hard side to dodge. The other thing is when they get big enemies like that, their field of view is absolutely just terrible. They need to either shrink down the size of the enemies or zoom the camera out. Because a lot of the time they'll do attacks that go above the screen, off to the side, whatever. Because you're right up next to them, you can't see what's going to happen. So you get clobbered again. And it reminds me a lot of Stellar Blade in that they're trying to be extremely fancy with the attacks, making it fast-paced, but the fast-paced nature of these attacks don't exactly go along with the slow pace of your dodging and blocking. In this case, there's no blocking because it's Wukong, but there's a reason why from software, even though, yes, they use wide sweeping attacks, it's kind of on the slowest side, too. And just through sheer rage and stubbornness am I getting through some of these bosses. It's actually, I can point to three particular bosses. Um, that tiger actually only took me a couple of tries. But this white you see here, he, he would have been a piece of cake if I came back later. But because I was being stubborn, I was just... I was going to beat him with what I had at that point in time, and I did. And it took me several tries, and I could have easily made life easier for myself if I just came back later, which I thought about doing. But I'm just going to let it play. I 
I actually almost thought I messed up at that point. Mainly due to not being able to gather that spirit, but uh, they thought of that and they made it so that I could grab it later without having to beat that particular enemy again. So I guess, let me, I'm sorry, I probably should have scripted this, but I'm doing it off the cuff right now. Trying to get it down because I just played it a little bit yesterday and then I played a lot of it today since it's my day off. And one of the other things that's like sort of over animated outside of the sweeping attacks with some of these enemies, particularly if they have like a staff, those are the ones I have the most trouble with. Or like a spear, something along those lines. Is that some of these commands that you use are over animated, like using the gourd, which has wine in it that you use to heal. And it, like, I don't know, there's been times where I've been button mashing the button to use the wine and he just won't drink for some odd reason and I failed because he just won't drink the wine and sometimes he'll sit there and you have to wait for it to him actually you know tip it up and drink it and stuff like that and if you get interrupted you don't get to drink the wine and you don't get your health back and that's just driven me nuts in pretty much any game that does that where you already have the item you told them to use it and then they have this like sort of wind up animation to actually count the health. Kind of like still a blade again. Same thing there. Final Fantasy 7 Remake slash Rebirth. They did the exact same thing where you have the ATB. You have to wait for them to cast it. But if it gets interrupted it doesn't count. Because the, adding a timer onto what is already essentially kind of a timer in a sort of fashion. I just wish they would just use the item. Like right away. Like what they used to do but no they have to animate it now and it's not just a short animation it takes a couple of seconds for it to actually go through sorry i'm, I'm ranting mm, it's a point of contention and i guess another thing that sort of takes a really long time sometimes i don't know why sometimes it'll be instant but you have the heavy attack so you see the three focus circles when you build up enough of it you hit the y button you'll do a heavy attack for some odd reason, he has to, I don't know, it, do a wind-up animation. Like, so here, I'll show you here. See that circle on the bottom right? I'm about to do a heavy attack after I make sure I have all three of those circles filled. And on top of, like, again, uh, an enemy with a staff doing a lot of flat. But in order to get the heavy attack off, he does this fancy footwork where he'll sometimes flip backwards, but he'll also swirl the pole around before extending it, which leaves you wide open to being hit and causing you to not do the heavy attack, losing all of your focus without the attack going off, which is just super annoying and extremely frustrating, to be honest. But I am enjoying myself. Except for, you know, the bits of rage when I do a lot of things over and over again. Uh, but when, you know, you finally beat it and you're like, yeah. You get that moment of all the anger was uh, kind of embarrassing, but somewhat worth it. Uh, I'm finally done beating this boss. So in terms of difficulty, I'm going to put it somewhere along this maybe... I don't know, slightly easier than Stellar Blade, harder than Fallen Order. Definitely not as hard as Sekiro, Shadows Died Twice, or Shekaros, whatever, however you pronounce it. So it's not going to be exactly for the faint of heart or people who aren't going to be patient enough to not get beat up and die a lot, unless you're, you know, more coordinated and better than me then you'll probably be fine anyways if you made it this far thanks for watching have a good one